Welcome back to another spicy severance theory video. Episode 5 of the series will be PD centric with a small detour to talk about one specific Milchik theory that I left out of my original analysis. There are so many weird and mysterious things that take place in season 1 regarding PD and so far I've scarcely touched any of them. So strap on your tinfoil caps and pour out your favorite drink because it's time to dive. As per usual, I need to give the new innies fair warning. This video is packed to the gills with spoilers and details regarding the show. You may want to save this to watch later and go binge Severance if you haven't already. It takes about 9 hours. It's okay to call in sick and make a day of it. Before we begin, I'd like to give a warm welcome to the newest Patreon members, Sanford Come Pond, I hope I'm saying that right, and Colleen Christie Willett. Thank you so much for your support and helping me on this journey. You have my eternal gratitude. Look for your names in the closing credits. If you like what I do and are interested in supporting my work, consider joining my Patreon. Link is in the description. Shameless self-promotion check. Okay, now we can begin. Ah yes, the Seth Milchik. Just when you think you've seen the last of him, he pops out and gives that stern Milchik glare. Classic. Straight off the top, the idea of there being more than one Milchik is both terrifying and hilarious at the same time, but that's exactly what this theory is about. The multiple Milchik theory posits that Milchik is one of many clones, and they all drone away for Lumen in overlapping capacities. The reasoning? There is no way Milchik can cover all of his duties, so there must be more than one of him. On its face, it might sound a little out there, and when I first heard about this one, I slept on it. Now this was a long time ago, back in my darkest severance theory addiction days, but we're not going to talk about that today. It's a wild theory, but think about it. You see Milchik doing a bit of just about everything. The man wears a lot of hats. Milchik manages to be the AV guy, the nurse guy, the security guy, new chip orientation guy. Melin party technician guy, and he even runs the break room and still has time for team building exercises with MDR, and probably other departments on the floor too. Some viewers speculate that this scene, where he is in the process of breaking Heli in the aptly named break room, happens at the same time that we see him elsewhere, because that break room scene is supposed to have gone on for several hours and took more than one workday. I can't confirm this to be true, but it does look very suspect. This theory also gets a little help from the Lexington letter, a short written about another Lumen site in Topeka, Kansas, and the experience of a severed individual that worked there. Again, I don't want to ruin this too much with details, but there is a person in that story who happens to share the same surname as Milchik. I will be creating a future Severance Theories video on the Lexington Letter where we will go into every related theory, but for now I just want to acknowledge this little strange coincidence that we both know is not a coincidence. The whole thing is pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. From Lumen's perspective, the idea of clones has its benefits. But there are some major drawbacks. For one, if there are clones of Milchik, they would still behave like separate people, and it would become hard for Lumen to hide this little secret from outsiders, or people that they might want to keep in the dark about this little fact. See, the thing is, Milchik A doesn't know or experience the same exact events as Milchik B. They don't have a shared knowledge of the past, so it would get messy very quickly if they were trying to hide this. Unless, of course, Lumen has figured out a way to sync up their memories, or they've created some kind of hive mind. Huh. Hive mind. The other big issue this theory faces that would require some explaining is that cloning in all likelihood would require the clone start out life as a child and be raised to adulthood. So we're talking about a bunch of Milchik Bambinos being raised to adulthood together and then being trained and installed into positions at Lumen to do AV work. That would take a lot of time and effort to accomplish and I'm not so sure Lumen would see the value in it. So that's enough about Milchik. Time to talk about PD. One key piece of information we get about PD comes from Miss Cobel. Excuse me, Cobel. She states that she saw, quote, signs of reintegration with PD before the incident when he finally escapes Lumen for good. So we are meant to take this to mean that PD was coming to work after he was reintegrated. And it appears he was doing this for several weeks before something caused him to make a run for it. My guess is Cobel was watching him as she does, 
and Petey figured out his cover was blown. But why would Petey come back to work after the procedure? The prevailing theory is that he was spying for Ragabi, the former Lumen ship installer and current Lumen ship hater, the very person who performed Petey's reintegration procedure. Petey was probably playing the inside man while trying to gather intel for Ragabi, or perhaps he was there to sow seeds of doubt in order to turn more innies on the seventh floor against Lumen. Being that Petey and Mark were tight, Petey probably tried to put his buddy up on game by leaving behind notes, like the one we see in the MDR training handbook. He could have been trying to get Mark to see the light through these little post-its because he knew talking about it would be too dangerous. Kind of like employees talking about starting a union at Starbucks or Amazon. Shots fired! Shots fired! An obvious question this brings up is why didn't Koble try to do something about it? She claims she was suspicious of Petey being reintegrated, so you would think she'd feel obligated to investigate something like this. But we have to remember, the board doesn't even believe that reintegration is a thing. Not only that, but Koble seems to have her own agenda regarding reintegration, as in she wants to find proof it is real. She spent a lot of her time looking for hints of the possibility of reintegration with Mark, even going as far as to try to test Mark's ability to detect his Audi's thoughts and feelings about Miss Casey, aka Gemma, in her own unsanctioned experiments. So if Koble saw signs of reintegration in Petey, she might just make her own observations and keep that under wraps. Another question you might immediately have about Petey was how did he manage to escape Lumen with the break room tape? Also, how did he get the break room tapes in the first place? There is some speculation about who is being tortured on the break room tape. Some people think it's Petey, others say it's Mark. It sounds like Mark to me, but we have confirmation from the subtitles of the episode that designate the lines as Mark's. So unless that's a mistake, it looks like it is Mark. In order to answer those questions, we need to talk about the ways the tape could have been smuggled out of Lumen because they have those dang code detectors that are meant to keep all notes and hidden messages from being passed from innies to the outside and vice versa. You know those magical detectors that are somehow able to read any text or words that a person tries to smuggle out of the severed floor? Can you detect my sarcastic shade? I'm not sure those code detectors are even real because they sound far too fantastically capable. But let's say for argument's sake, we suspend that disbelief and assume that Lumen has this incredible tech at their disposal. These are the most likely scenarios for getting the tape out of Lumen, as far as I can tell. Number one, the code detectors were out of commission. I won't get too much into precedent set by the Lexington letter, but if you know, you know. But suffice it to say, there is reason to believe that there are times when the detectors go down for maintenance. If perfectly timed, this could be the way to get the tape out. Number two, the person in charge of detecting let it slide or they missed it. Like most commercial buildings, we know that there is more than one way in and out because the law demands it. We know that there are two kinds of elevators, one for severed people and one for unsevered people. We can safely assume that the severed elevator is unique and that it can switch chips on and off for its occupants, or at least detect the presence of chips. Maybe the unsevered elevator is just a plain old elevator, so it may be possible to get on the unsevered elevator as a severed person, and if you were to manage to make it to the main floor and get past the security that we know is waiting, you're golden. At this point, you can just moonwalk out of the building. Also, what if the person manning the detector let it go because they are in cahoots, or they missed the tape because there was a major distraction, like say an emergency fire alarm? Point number three, someone else besides Petey took it out of the building. Pretty straightforward here. It could be that someone else besides Petey surreptitiously recorded it, or it could be that recording is standard procedure, but the tape was taken out by someone else regardless. As for who, the possibilities are endless, so I'm not even gonna try. Okay, I lied. It's Koble or Agabi. I think Koble could have scooped that tape up and passed it on easily. I also think Ragabi could yoink the tape and maybe she gave it to Petey to persuade him to get reintegrated and help with her resistance against Lumen. But you know what? I also think Koble and Ragabi might have been partners in crime and arranged the whole thing, but that's a theory for another day so forget I even said it. Idea number four, and this is a theory that I also like a lot. Petey slipped out through the staircase after causing a distraction. When Heli is getting orientation, we see her walk out the back door that leads to the staircase that heads up and out of the severed floor. That door is apparently the physical limit of the transmission that keeps the chips active. The minute you walk out of that door, you're back in Audi mode. And I gotta say, this sequence where any Heli and Audi Heli are battling each other was masterfully done, especially after you realize what's really happening on the other side of that door. And even more so when you meet Audi Heli for the first time in that video and you begin to understand what she must have been thinking when she kept waking up on the outside of the door. And then of course, repeatedly trying to force her any to go back online by walking through it again and again. Priceless. 
Okay, so where were we? Oh yeah, PD's escape. I think it's one of the latter two. We do know that PD showed any mark where the security room was, and it appears to have involved triggering a fire alarm. It's likely that PD used this as cover to make his move, assuming he did have the recording on him. It may be that he took the stairs to get out, or it could be, like I said, someone else took it out and gave it to PD later. These are the best scenarios that I can think of, where I can imagine that the security might be distracted enough, or a severed person could escape and bypass the detectors with the least amount of resistance. Okay, let's talk about PD's post-it notes. We see these notes left by PD or someone else inside the new trainee documentation for the orientation of the newly severed. One of PD's jobs as lead refiner was guiding severed noobs from the moment of birth to being full-fledged refiners. I think we're meant to believe that PD apparently left these scribbles in the book for Mark to find, but it could have been someone else that left these notes for PD to find. Not really sure. I do wonder though. Why didn't anyone else spot the notes and say something? It is the little things like this that make me think that Lumen doesn't have as tight a lid on things as they would like you to believe. Again, code detectors. I'm doubtful. And I think Lumen's middle management is actually a skeleton crew, but they want to give the appearance of being omnipresent and watching your every move. But in reality, they only seem to be watching some of the time. The psychological effect of feeling as though you're being watched is enough to make most people behave accordingly, even if they aren't actually being watched 24-7. Lumen is counting on that fact to maintain control. But back to those scribbles though. Now I've done a crap ton of research on the post-it notes and such, but we won't be able to get into that in this video because it's too much to cover here. Trust me when I tell you that this grouping of theories will be the deepest rabbit hole that I have ever gone down in any video thus far. So as we stated earlier though, we don't know the order of events for certain. It's possible that he was turned and then the tape was something he smuggled out after he was reintegrated. However, we do know that there is a contingent of resistors within Lumen that are seeking the company's downfall. And it may be that Rigabi is a part of that action. So who else is involved? That's a question I can't answer, much less speculate on beyond two possibilities. And that is Irving might be working with Rigabi from the outside or Cobell is working both sides. Besides that, we don't get much in the way of hints that anyone else in the building is anti-Lumen. Okay, before we close this one out, I want to talk about this curious little factoid. Did anyone else find it strange that PD used a greeting card that was written to congratulate someone on the birth of a niece? As it happens to be the case, Mark is going to be the uncle to Devin's daughter. There are some rumblings out there about Devin and how she might be hiding something from her brother. I don't think there's enough to say for sure, but I did find this little detail odd. It could imply that Petey, Innie, or Audi knows Devin, or that he at least may have spoken to her about Mark's whereabouts after his reintegration. Maybe that's why Petey knew to find Mark at her home, as well as the night Mark was out living it up like a true rock star at Pips. It would be interesting if that were true, because Devin never said anything to Mark about it. Oh Devin, you little curly-headed scamp, what have you been up to? Okay, so that's all for this episode. Is there more PD oriented theory out there? Sure there is. Like I said, we didn't talk about the map yet, but I'm saving that for another video where I'll get into the physical layout of Lumen and all of its spaces, as well as PD's notes and try to make some sense of all of that. One more thing, I'm curious to see how many of you innies are interested in a discord where we can continue the conversation about this show and others like it. I'll be sending out a poll on that soon, so make sure you yell at me on it if you like the sound of that. Thanks again to all my patrons, you're the real MVP. With that, I bid you all adieu. Thanks for watching, take care, and as always, off you go.